Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Once again, wake up to news that makes you sort of pinch yourself, or perhaps you didn't wake up to it. It was around yesterday. This escalation of uh, rhetorical saber rattling between Washington, D.C. and North Korea has, has actually become quite chilling. Listening to Matt Fry earlier today uh, on The Breakfast Show, who has obviously visited the region and reported from there on many occasions, and, and detecting, I double-checked this, I didn't want to speak out of turn, just double-checked during the news bulletin, detecting a very real sense that this, this could actually escalate escalate into, into, you know, warfare. And why? That seems to be the question that should be asked before you, why? Well, from where I'm sitting, the answer seems pretty clear. Donald Trump is absolutely desperate from, um, for distraction from the continuing uh, collapse of confidence in his presidency and, of course, the, the growing evidence of quite epic corruption. It's a dead cat. It's the biggest dead cat of all. And if you're a sociopath, as Kim Jong-un clearly is, um, and Donald Trump quite possibly is, there, there is no dead cat too dangerous to use as a distraction from your own problems. A few people die, a few thousand people die, tens of thousands of people, it doesn't matter, I'm all right, I'm okay. I, I, I don't know quite what question to ask you. I can't just sit here and say, are you scared, can I? Can I do that? Have we, have we spent enough time together over the years now to have that kind of relationship? Are you scared? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Fellow who grew up near me tweeted me earlier to ask if I'd been to the nuclear. Why does my accent go Midlands when I start talking about the Midlands? Did you notice that then? Fellow who grew up with me tweeted, tweeted me earlier to ask if I remember the nuclear bunkers near my mum's house. I do. They, they were built originally as a rover factory. They built they built um, uh, engines and stuff there during the Second World War, and then in the sixties they got turned into nuclear bunkers. There was all sorts of myths and fables governing them when we were kids. Um, so I googled it. It turns out that the, the caretaker got busted a couple of years ago for running the place as a cannabis farm, allegedly. Do I have to say allegedly? He went to. I think he got jammed. Anyway, I don't know where the nearest nuclear bunker is, uh, and, and I, I sort of um, not quite sure. It's time to. Uh, <laughs> check the coordinates just yet but that that is that is the sense i have uh, the, the problem also that we have together is that usually i make much of the fact that i don't really invite experts onto the program because generally they don't know um, any more than we do they don't know any more about um, british politics if you write about it every day or if you read about it every day on this one i i i, I just think that the known knowns, as Donald Rumsfeld would put it, are pretty thin on the ground. We've got the known unknowns, the unknown unknowns, and the unknown knowns, but the known knowns, what are the known knowns? You can't, you see, you, you, you and I might not even agree on Donald Trump being mad. Uh, some people still defending him. Uh, the, the, the photograph, the image of him surrounded by family members. And, and that strange woman, Kellyanne Conway, the one who came up with alternative facts with a straight face on national television. That's terrifying. That, that's third world stuff, right? That, that's the kind of thing that Sasha Baron Cohen takes the mickey out of, an American president surrounded by his incredibly ordinary, in intellectual terms, and being polite, for son, sons and, and son-in-law and daughter and spokesperson. The new fellow that's popped up in the White House, this Stephen Miller guy who gave a speech when he was at college about how he hated having to pick up his own rubbish because that's what they had janitors for. Uh, he, he, he gave an interview to Fox News last night in which he said um, that Donald Trump was the greatest orator of all time or something like that and, and the finest president that America had ever had. And you realise we are going down an Orwellian... It's so clichéd. So boy cries wolf this. All those years of saying, well, this is a bit Orwellian or it reminds me of 1984. And you'd see a CCTV camera in Tesco's and think that, that it was just like Big Brother. It really wasn't. Big Brother is all about subverting truth. Alternative facts... Is, is, is the Orwellian dystopia, where the government get to tell you what is true. Fake news started off being things that weren't true uh, about Trump's opponents that he punted as being true, like the, uh, the passport, the Bertha movement. That was the origins of fake news. Now it's transmogrified into things that are true, but Trump doesn't like. So there's two types of fake news. There's him telling lies, and then there's other people telling the truth, which he now labels fake news, which is why he's had to set up his own on Facebook channel. So for me, the backdrop of the clearly bonkers 
uh, brain that is, or what passes for a brain that's ticking away inside that weirdly quaffed orange head, means that, yes, I am frightened that he'll start a war just to distract the American people from the Russian scandal that will eventually engulf him. That's incredible, because you will now have people in middle America going, yeah, he sent my son to die so that Donald Trump doesn't get impeached. They won't put it quite like that, but that's what they'll be doing. A year ago, two years ago, I just said, don't be daft, calm down, this will soon pass. I don't know, though. I mean, what do you think? Really? War? Between two apparently mad people? And again, even that isn't a known known anymore, is it? Even that's not a, an uncontroversial comment, because to, to surely, to goodness, anybody with a modicum of objectivity would see that Kim Jong-un and Donald Trump are cut from pretty much the same cloth. The only difference is that American democracy hasn't yet been subverted to the point where he can chop off his uh, uncle's head if his uncle displeases him, or, or, or feed his, if his son-in-law steps out of line, feed him through a paper shredder. It's, 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 it's absolutely bonkers territory, this. But some people will already be saying, no, 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 no. Kim Jong-un is mad, but Donald Trump is not. He's making America great again. Making Armageddon great again. What, what, what do you reckon genuinely? And let, let's just talk like friends today. I've got no particular insights on this. I, I, I would actually defend until the, uh, not to the death, but metaphorically speaking, the, the perception that Donald Trump is now embarked upon an ego trip of such epic and international impact that we should all be very, very scared. Um, that, that's the bridge I'll die on, so to speak. I, you, you, you have to provide some pretty epic evidence that, that he's not in order to make me think again. Kim Jong-un, I only know what I've been told by the Western media, um, and more importantly by NGOs and charities and human rights organisations that, that, that seek to get on the ground in places like that. Um, you know, starvation level, uh, poverty in many parts of, of that particular country. But I don't know much about North Korea. I, I wouldn't want to live there, and he does appear to, to knock off anybody that displeases him. So you would think... Well, two years ago, three years ago, when, when there was still a sort of broad consensus on the fact that the earth was round and the sun would come up in the morning, now they get called alternative facts by people like Kellyanne Conway. A couple of years ago, there would have been a broad consensus, wouldn't there? That, uh, <laughs> I mean, who's even the good guy? Who, who's even the goodies? Do we have to get into bed with America if Donald Trump does decide to undertake military action against North Korea? Or if he has to respond to military action that North Korea undertake because he's provoked them? Do we have to get involved in that because we're so desperate to be in bed with America for trade reasons post-Brexit? That'd be great, wouldn't it? Brexit leads us into a nuclear war. <laughs> and, I, I mean, the likelihood of setting off a nuclear missile, there's a very, very worrying report, I think it was in the New York Times, about in the run-up um, to the election, he, he, when you start having meetings with the National Security Advisors, and, and Trump was obsessed with the question of why they had nuclear bombs if they never used them. So this little sort of man-child brain can't process nuanced thought, it can't do complicated, sophisticated thought, actually scratch complicated and sophisticated, he can't really do thinking. Uh, the, the, the briefing notes he gets given, if they're more than half a page long, his advisers now know that he won't read them. Half a page is about the limit of his, his attention span. So when you tell him he's got a nuclear bomb, he doesn't understand why he can't use it. He doesn't understand the kind of curiously contradictory nature of deterrent. Why have you got a nuclear bomb? Well, so that the other fellow doesn't use his. Well, what if we didn't have a nuclear bomb? Well, then the other fellow might. It's not, it's not necessarily watertight logic, but it's the history, it's the historical rationale of a deterrent. Um, I can't ask you, can I, without answering the question myself? <sighs> yeah, I think it's possible. I really do. I, I find the White House in particular so uh, absolutely impenetrable to understand how anybody can feel anything but, uh, at best, I suppose, disgust and at worst, abject terror when they look at what is happening in that particular cradle of democracy. I guess I, I think anything's possible now. Absolutely anything. If, if you can hire somebody to go onto Fox News and say that you're the finest orator in the history of the world, or words to that effect, when, frankly, you can't even string a sentence together, literally, you can't string a sentence together, then, yeah, I think anything's possible. And I think his regard for human life, any human life except his own, seems to be just sort of twisted to a point where I find it terrifyingly plausible that our oldest ally, or our greatest ally, 
is led by a man who I think is probably perfectly capable of starting a war just to satisfy his own ego and distract the American people from the growing evidence of epic corruption and collusion at the heart of his administration. Wow. And then you're left with the biggest question of all, which is, do you think Vladimir Putin wants him to go to war with North Korea? Give me a ring. Let's just keep each other company now. Give me, um... Give, give me a hug. Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three is the number that you need. You can email james at lbc.co.uk. You can tweet uh, at Mr. James OB. And you can, of course, text 84850. It's, it's it, yeah, I mean, it, it really, there are very, very occasionally, there are days when I can get away with just saying to you, what do you think? And I think this is one of those days. Do, do, do you think proper war is looking likely? Oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three. Look at the rhetoric. Fire and fury like the world has never seen. That last line came from a speech that had been written for him that he delivered earlier about the opioid crisis in America. So, you know, th th this is so illustrative of how his, how his mind works. He delivered this pre-prepared speech. That contained the phrase about the likes of which the country had never seen. So, you know, an hour or two later when he's delivering this, he, he slips in that phrase that he's picked up earlier that someone else wrote for him. Fire and fury like the world has never seen. Is it not the 72nd anniversary of Nagasaki? Like the world has never seen. What does he even mean? Like the world has never seen. Does he know that America has dropped atomic bombs before? What, 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 what fire and fury could possibly be more epic and more horrendous in its scale and impact than Hiroshima and Nagasaki? Oh, I don't know. I think it's looking likely. Uh, I, and a few of you have reminded me that I said um, towards the end of last year that a war had to happen. I, I, I said it explicitly in March of this year. A war has to happen. The only thing, if you look at the playbook of history, these kind of regimes, these um, either quasi or completely fascistic regimes that, that utterly, utterly peddle untruths to distract the population from reality, the reality that becomes irresistible, the point at which you can't say alternative facts or fake news, you know, the point at which the sun comes up and you can no longer keep arguing that it's not going to. What do they do historically, um, whether in fiction or in fact? They have to have a war. They have to have an enemy. Because the, the Muslims aren't working as an enemy for, for, for Donald Trump. He, he's not got that kind of traction that he wanted. He couldn't get the ban through. There haven't been, thank God, any terror attacks, apart from the one on the mosque in Minnesota, which, of course, he hasn't mentioned at all. So, the, the, it, it, essentially, the people that will forgive him anything, as long as he allows them to carry on being racist, as long as he allows this white supremacist ethos to, to gain traction. Big story um, about the, the, the neo-Nazi movements, the white supremacist organizations in America. You uniting to form a new a new body those people there right that that those are the ones he's frightened of the, when they wake up to reality he's finished and they're the ones that will be at the front of the queue to buy flags and popcorn if there is some sort of military engagement with north korea gosh here are the numbers now you will get through oh three four five six oh six oh nine seven three i suppose the gold Ticket call, the jackpot call, is the one telling me to calm the heck down, mate, and get over yourself. No, nothing like that's going to happen because dot, 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 dot. But from where I am, that would involve imputing some form of rational or, 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 or sane behaviour upon Donald Trump when there's no evidence yet that he's capable of either. Happy days. It's 10.17. You're listening to James O'Brien on LBC. Don't, don't be silly. America wouldn't possibly elect a, a narcissist who's got so much to hide he won't actually publish his own tax returns. Don't be silly. He's not going to start his own television station and call the rest of the news media corrupt and fake in order to cover up the fact that he's <laughs> essentially a sort of liar. Don't be silly. That doesn't happen in the West. That doesn't happen in the 21st century. We've learned too much. Don't be silly. Of course there's not going to be a war. Well, hang on, everything else came true. 03456060973. Kim Jong-un is a, is, a, is a known known, right? We all think he's a mad psychopathic warmonger, potentially. Donald Trump is a kind of unknown known. We, we think he's probably a little bit mad, a little bit psychopathic, but we're not quite sure how much. That seems to me to be the only mystery here. Sandra's in Muswell Hill. Sandra, what would you like to say? Yes, I think the historical analogy, James, is Nero fiddling while Rome burned. In fact, when I watched John, that clip this morning of Donald Trump promising more terror than has ever been seen on this earth before. Fire and fury. It reminded me of, of, of Peter Ustinov playing Nero 
in some Hollywood epic back in the 50s or 60s. It's the most extraordinary thing that we we know that history repeats itself. We just don't realise that you can leave a nice big gap. And Are you in the bath, Sandra? Like this. Are you in the bath at the moment? I am. Well, there's a first. <laughs> I know, I, 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 I'm slightly, that, that's quite all right. I, I rather like the idea of keeping you company in the bath, but I, I'm a little bit discombobulated with regards to the ongoing conversation about geopolitics. Well, why not? Well, I don't know. I, I just feel it all sort of oddly. I'm the one that feels exposed. Well, you shouldn't, James. No, no, clearly not. Do you? I mean, the problem that I've got is is the. I, I sort of can't confine myself to to this country, but there are still people who who look at Donald Trump and don't see what. Everybody else sees. They don't see a naked emperor. They see beautiful robes and they see wonderful clothes and they think, you know, this whole make America, even his approval ratings are the lowest in history, but among Republican voters, he's still getting over 60%. So they see what we see and well, yet see something completely see different. See. They see the trappings. And as you say, I mean, to, to have your own television channel because everybody else lies. Yes. Whereas he and his administration, along in cahoots with Saudi Arabia, is busy trying to close down one of the better, fairer um, news channels, which is Al Jazeera. Well, yes, I mean, the, the, this issue it's covering a lot of ground. I just, do you this think... is why I make the analogy with Nero, because there is honestly, there's no rhyme or reason. It's got to do with, you called it narcissism, it's got to do with a, with a sense of a, self, a self-serving yes. kind of person who really, really can't see, for instance, even making that, that threat this morning mm. on, on, national, on international television, that not just human beings and entire countries, but the entire world, he refuses to see that we do live all on the same planet. So, yes, and, and uh, I mean, even if the kind of, if we f focus on the diplomacy rather than the military strategy, you, you look at someone like Kim Jong-un, and presumably the majority of the information that we get is, is, is close to accurate, the putches, the disappearances, the starvation, the, the famines across the country, and you, you, you're probably your best off not poking him with a, with a stick, I would have thought. I just, oh dear. Um, scale of one to ten, this is desperately unprofessional, but you're in the bath, so you can't talk. On a scale of one to ten, how likely do you think a, 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 an actual military escalation is? Shots being fired. Oh, God, I, I fear it's... Yes, I, I, I think it's a very, very strong possible. Maybe eight. <laughs> Good grief. 24 minutes after 10, as I say, that's a tiny bit um, unprofessional. But sometimes you can't get a handle on things. Things are so unprecedented and things are so sort of out there that you, you, you find yourself either reaching for an ancient analogy, as Sandra did, um, or, or you find yourself sort of trying to simplify things just in the hope of making them sound a little less... A little less frightening. 0345 973 is the number that you need. Remember that the dear leader in North Korea is... Actually, can you find me that clip from Fox News of Stephen Miller saying that Donald Trump is the best orator in the book? Because, to me, that's the parallels are so obvious. He is now surrounding himself with people who aren't allowed to say boo to a goose. The only way you can sustain this level of sociopathy is by being surrounded by sycophants. And that's what Kim Jong-un is. So, so wars happen when two crazy people have nobody in their camp to tell them they're being crazy, right? 0345 6060973. Fiona is in Maidstone. Fiona, are you in the bath? <laughs> no, and that's really thrown me as well. I feel like I should be. I don't know if I want to speak to anyone today who's not in the bath. Oh. It's all right. I'll make an exception in your case. What did you want to say? Um, I completely agree with you. Oh, I've no. Got, um, I do. I'm sorry. Uh, it actually makes me sick with fear. Uh, my son is going to um, America, leaves on the 15th of August, to uh, do a third year of his degree um, in California. And um, I'm, as a mother, I'm actually terrified that he's going to be over there for a whole academic year. And and it's you know, it's, I just really think this is the beginning of something awful. Why? Right, why do you think that? And and as a mum, would you still think it if you're? I mean, America's main, the mainland of America is pretty safe. It's it's American territory in Guam. That's military stra strategic uh, military value. There's two bases there, I think, two military bases there. So it's unlikely if he's going to you know UCLA that, that there's going to be any immediate impact on him there. But w would you be as worried if he if he wasn't going? Um, yes, I would. Because, as your previous caller said, we all live on the same planet. You've got two 
children basically in the playground saying my dad's bigger than your dad at the cost of absolutely everything. That's what it looks um, like, isn't it? It really does. And, uh, yeah, and I just can't believe that it's, it's got this far even with absolutely no kind of signs of any impeachment or anybody standing up. No, there is. I mean, it's just, it's just that the wheels move so slowly and, and the desperation to get rid of Muller and the Russian-inspired um, online calls for, for McMaster to be fired. That, that speaks of panic. There's proper panic in place. The big panic is about the investigation um, stretching into his business's links with Russian money because that, that's where the dirt is. That's why he couldn't publish his tax returns. The, uh, the, the really dirty Russian money that's being used to prop up a lot of his business in Investments. If that goes public, I think he recognises that even his most bovine supporters are going to go, hang on a minute, you're a crook. So he needs a dead cat. And, and I, I guess that's the fear, isn't it? It's the fear that you have, is that there is no, uh, there is no path too ugly if it provides distraction for him to contemplate going there. Completely. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, I think these kind of things do escalate a lot quicker than perhaps you give credit for. You know, at the moment, the first... You know, the, at the moment it's threats, but you you know the kind of the two caliber of people that you're dealing with. Um, I think it would escalate extremely fast, and I think the Russians would jump on board in America. Uh, uh, and then a front row I, seat. I to Sorry, it's, it, I can see that it does, and I, I don't want to add to that by any stretch of the imagination, but, you know, <laughs> we, we, we speak honestly, don't we? And you, you look at the scenario, and I'm afraid I keep reaching back, I keep glancing into the rearview mirror and saying, uh, looking at all the things that I didn't think could possibly happen because it would be too too bonkers, you know, to, to, to elect this man in the first place, even to, to give him the candidacy. We kept looking back, and then you think, well, that must be the point at which it breaks. Surely nobody is going to remain... Uh, affectionate towards a man who boasts about sexually assaulting women. Surely nobody is going to remain supportive of a man who has a, a long history of, of ripping off cred credulous investors, of, of banging on about illegal immigration while employing illegal immigrants to build Trump Tower. Surely, surely at some point the dam will break and, and everyone will agree that the emperor is naked, but still they insist because of the seductive power of... Um, bigotry and hatred. People who've spent two, three decades feeling utterly, utterly emasculated because they're not allowed to lord it over black people or be vile about Muslims. And just that simple pill, that powerful pill, so powerful that it allows people to be blind to absolutely everything else. And that's why I fear that this could escalate. But again, you know, I'm open to correction. 0345 6060 I don't think you're going to be able to persuade me that he doesn't need a war. I've been saying it since the beginning of the year. The only way, eventually, in which you can keep that population supine and support supportive is by uniting them to face a common enemy. And Kim Jong-un fits the bill almost perfectly. What I didn't know, what I learned from Matt Fry this morning, was the continuing um, ordinance, the, the, the weaponry, the 10,000 supremely powerful guns that are massed just, just behind the demilitarized zone between South Korea and North Korea, which are, you know, officially still at war. It was, it was a truce, an armistice that called the end to the Korean War. And I guess the fact that we're talking about Korea in the context of war with America makes that old adage about people who don't learn from history being condemned forever to repeat it all the more potent. It's half past ten. It is the, 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 probably the least fashionable thing to say. I find myself saying it a lot lately, or, or at least I find myself trying hard not to have a strong opinion, because I think strong opinions furiously defended um, over the last couple of years have led us into the kind of um, mess that we appear to be in. So on this one, it's, it's very easy to say I don't know. Nobody knows, do they? Well, how likely is it that Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un are going to sort of match each other madness for madness and escalate into some form of international conflict? I don't know. But I am really interested in what you think, and we'll find out a little more in a moment. I've got a couple of phone lines free. I, on these sort of subjects, if you're interested, if you're like, one of the many people who get in touch to complain that you can't always get through or you often can't get through, the more... Um, resistant the question is to really strong opinion, the easier it is to get through. This is a thoughtful morning, I think. Um, 03456060973 rather than a rather than a furious exchange of views type of morning. So I, I mentioned that to just reiterate the fact that if you, if you are thinking clearly and you do have something interesting to say, we, we'll almost certainly be able to hear it. Before that, breaking news in, well, broken and developing news is probably a fairer description in Paris where a car has struck a group 
of soldiers injuring six. Um, recent terror attacks, of course, um, have uh, on occasion been targeted at security forces who remain a very constant and vigilant presence on French streets. There's a police operation underway. Mikey Kay is a journalist based in Paris, and he joins me from there now. Um, the local mayor has uh, expressed a, a, a fairly clear belief that this act was deliberate, Mikey. What else do we know? Yeah, morning, James. Um, absolutely right. The, uh, the mayor is calling this a, a deliberate attack. Um, shortly after 8.15 local uh, this morning, there were um, six soldiers, uh, part of Operation Sentinel. Operation Sentinel was a, um, a huge operation launched by President Hollande after the Charlie Hebdo attacks in January 2015, putting another 10,000 troops on the streets of France and around 6,500 of those troops on the streets uh, of Paris. Uh, those numbers have dropped slightly uh, in September 2016 to around 7,500 with 3,000 reservists. But there were a group of six soldiers um, targeted by an attacker driving a uh, BMW car. Um, four are injured to a critical uh, and have been taken to a military hospital. The event took place uh, in a suburb around two kilometers uh, to the north of Arc de Triomphe uh, in, the, uh, in the north of the city. Uh, and as you rightly point out, um, both policemen and soldiers have become targets, especially in 2017, um, for these type of attacks. Uh, if you remember back to February, in, um, outside the Louvre, there was a, a, an attack on a soldier there. Uh, Champs-Élysées, a policeman was shot. Um, Notre Dame Cathedral, uh, a policeman was attacked. Uh, and then again in June on the Champs-Élysées. So certainly a trend. Uh, no, no um, clarification or confirmation yet that, it, that, that it's an act of terror, I I Islamist or otherwise, but I, I don't think anybody can be blamed for allowing their speculations to, to go down that route. In terms of modus operandi, r just remind me whether or not seeking to flee the scene, seeking to escape has, has been part of the game plan before. Yeah, I think what's interesting about these type of attacks is um, if you look at the key modus operandi of, of the Islamic State, for example, what makes them so effective of what they call their martyrdom operations where they strap vests to themselves or use what's called a um, uh, suicide vehicle attack, uh, you, you know, basically using some sort of device to, to blow themselves up. And I think that's what's made them uh, a formidable uh, enemy in terms of trying to counter. Um, these attacks have been more um, almost flippant, if you like, not necessarily with the with the training, with the connections to Islamic State core, but but more from sort of contagion through social media. Um, a lot of people call these kind of, kind of attacks lone wolf attacks, where mm -hmm. they don't necessarily involve a lot of training, uh, and the outcome can be potentially deadly or uh, or not. But certainly, utilising um, you know things like cars, trucks. We saw in the Nice attack, obviously, the, a truck was used to devastating effect. Using, using knives, uh, weapons aren't readily available or guns aren't readily available in France. So we've seen sort of more of these knife attacks occur as well, but basically utilizing anything that they can weaponize, um, but not necessarily a, a, a direct um, coordinated attack, which has been coordinated by the Islamic State Corps in, uh, in Syria. So watch this space. Mikey K, live from Paris. Many thanks indeed for your time. More on that story as and when it develops. One day, when everything's calmed down, if we're still here and everything's gone back to normal, we'll have a look at, uh, at these sort of periods and, and wonder why some stories garner so much more of our interest. This isn't a criticism of anybody. I didn't do anything on the, the Minnesota mosque firebombing on this program and yet I felt this morning compelled to cover the maybe actually my kids were in Paris at the weekend um, so maybe that's that's why it just feels much nearer 10.40 is the time, Guam doesn't feel very near but it's certainly nearer to the top of the news agenda than it has been for a very long time after Kim Jong-un, the dear leader of North Korea um, effectively threatened to uh, attack it with missiles uh, well within range and American intelligence has uh, discovered in recent days that, that North Korea has developed uh, a nuclear warhead capable of being um, inserted into relatively small missiles, uh, to which Donald Trump has responded by threatening to hit the country with more fire and fury than the world has ever seen. Confident, everyone?
03456060973. Thank you for pointing out I missed this. I began the show this morning by asking whether or not we'd known each other long enough and have built up enough trust just to have a conversation based upon how frightened are you. And a few of you have pointed out that the first caller who rang in was in the bath, which rather suggests we have achieved a degree of trust between each other <laughs> that all ordinary radio programmes just can't reach. Um, 10.41 is the time. Johnny's in Aldgate. Johnny, what do you think? Hi, James. Uh, nice to speak to you. Likewise. Lovely. And so I, I think one of the frustrating things is that just like with a lot of news, we tend to get a very narrow um, view of it. Uh, when we look at North Korea, uh, the the context they get is of the last 50 years of, as they said, imperialist Western um, you know, pressure. They've got, you know, they had 20% of their population killed um, in three years, was it, in, um, in the North Korean War? Yes. Why, 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 I mean, I understand why you'd say that the North Korean news consumer's perspective might be a little narrow, given that everything is, is, is state-controlled and dissent is, is punishable by death. But I don't quite understand how you draw a parallel between that and the Western news consumer. Well, I, I, don't know, I think if you look at so this particular, the way they frame the, the news... Who do you mean by here, they? Who do you mean by they? I, I do tend to mean like the the, the commercial news organisations. Um, I think, especially in the West, they have a obviously a Western slant, just like anyone does. Well, do, I don't know what you mean by that. I hear this sort of thing a lot, and I'm never quite sure what's under the surface. Don't be shy. I mean, you, you, you're clearly yeah. alleging bias against people I consider friends and colleagues who risk their life to cover international I, situations, and and that's it's perfectly possible they are, and I've missed it. But why do you think that? I don't. I don't mean. I don't. I don't mean bias in um, in a in a purposeful way. I mean in in the sort of Chom, Chomsky esque sort of. Um, you get a very narrow field of what you're allowed to talk about in the commercial press. So, for example, with um, the North Korean War, we we don't talk about the you know the the, the impact that's still going on there from the previous war, the sanctions they've had for the last fifteen well, we, years. We, we, well, how do you know about them then? Uh, well, because there is. Because you know, I, I know there. about people like John Sweeney have done amazing reports from North Korea yeah, for, for Panorama and and for and for and for Newsnight. Matt Fry, who was uh, sitting in this chair just yeah. forty eight minutes ago, has, has been there many many times and reported back. I, I, I'm familiar with work done by charities and NGOs to highlight the the famine that has swept much of the country and the um, appalling privations visited upon the North Korean people. I, I, I don't want to get bogged down in this, uh, mate, and no, I don't I don't want to fall out. But but what, what no, are you what are you <laughs> alleging? You're, you're sort of no, saying I, we no, don't no, get I, the full picture. North Korea is not not all I, that bad. I mean, in, in a similar way, so I live in one of the uh, the decanted buildings that you've been talking about over the last couple of weeks. Yes. I mean, I've been pushing a lot with my, with my MP for a long time. We've yes. been trying to get it into the press, but it's very hard to get it into the press. Yeah, but that's not bias. That's, that's boredom, sadly. Know, that's just not you're, sexy. Exactly. No, you're absolutely right. It's, it's, you have a very small number of things which you can bring into the public consciousness. And these sorts of things are too big to normally do it. I mean, there's, it's not often um, presented that the last... U.S. North Korean treaty yes. was broken by the U.S. So they. No, I didn't know that. I don't know if that proves your point or not. But, but the, the in, but, so, so just example, but hang on, because we're going to be late for the travel news, and you, you, you've, you've, you've spent possibly it's my fault possibly for picking you up on the conspiratorial element of your contribution. But no, I'm not like that at all. What, what, well, no, no, they never think. No, no one ever thinks they are, mate. What? Uh, <laughs> what? Um. What do you think the likelihood is then of a military escalation? It may well be that we don't know as much about North Korea as we think we should, but we can all agree that he routinely pops off opponents and, and uh, even dissenters that he's, oh, yeah, he's biologically related to. He's and absolutely that, horrific. Yeah, and Donald Trump appears to be cut from similar cloth, although he's constrained by what passes for Western civilization at the moment. He can't chuck people in vats of acid yeah. or, 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 or blow them up with a cannon or whatever it may be. Um, what actually, against I'll, I'll, that? Go on. Well, I was going to say that so that the similarities is we tend to learn from these lessons. So if you look at Iran, for example, when they, they've made this fantastic treaty, which, you know, has limited nuclear weapons, et cetera, in that, in that area, in that country. And then the next organizer, the next government that comes into the state immediately starts to renege on those um, treaties, as you've seen um, over the last few weeks. Again, it's, you, I'm picking, it, yeah, I, I understand, I think, that this idea, I mean, the problem is that for me, you've got two baddies duking it out, and your perspective seems to be, 
that which is a familiar argument well america isn't just a good guy in these sort of th situations and that applies to negotiations with iran going back to the contras it applies to iraq it applies to the, the casting of america as the great white hope the great liberator um I, I agree with you on other conflicts but not when trump's in the white house i don't think anybody's going to be trying to anybody sensible is going to be trying to punt that speaking of sensible and speaking of what they're trying to punt about trump i found that clip and i'll say this to you now i i, I wish I wish that some of the uh, suggestions of, of Nazi echoes had been held back because sometimes if, if you were saying a year ago, this is, this is just fascism. This is the othering of people, the, the, the denigrating of the news media. And we were ticking off, remember, on that list of fascist tactics from the, from the Holocaust Museum in America. And, and, and yet this guy, this new guy in the, in the White House, describing Donald Trump in terms last night that I, I make no apology whatsoever for saying that Joseph Goebbels would have been proud of. I'll play that to you after this. And th this is the guy, Stephen Miller. I, I forget precisely what his job description is, but he's clearly pitching to be the new um, communications director at the White House. Um, he's currently a policy advisor, but he's chasing the bigger job that is now vacant after Scaramucci. That isn't his name, is it? What's his proper name? Is it Scaramucci? It sounds comical. It was Scaramucci. Yeah. Anyway, after he kind of did the Fandango. So there is a vacancy, and this guy's going for it. Just listen, this is real, all right? This isn't Saturday Night Live. This is Fox News. President Trump's the most gifted politician of our time, and he's the best orator to hold that office in generations. And so we're going to take the message out to the people. Because you said he is the leader of this nationwide and worldwide populist movement, and it's about uplifting working class people, black, Hispanic, white, but They don't want to hear that. What? Just the first bit again. President Trump's the most gifted politician of our time, and he's the best orator to hold that office in generations. And so we're going to take the message out to the people. Oh, okay. So I, it's, 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 it's close. Sean Hannity, of course, on Fox News has been trying to blame it all on Barack Obama. So you, you, you're welcome to choose between what sounds crazier. I'm, I'm going with that. The greatest orator that has held this office for generations. Well, so a better speaker than Barack Obama. A better speaker than, than, than Ronald Reagan or Bill Clinton. A better speaker than JFK. Okay, Joseph. Uh, Yanni is in Croydon. Yanni, what would you like to say? Good morning, James. Hello. Uh, well, first of all, I, I don't agree with that guy who was just um, whatever Scalamaggi or whatever his name is. Uh, but I, I don't think it's Trump's fault at all. I know you like to quickly jump on Trump, but this is all Obama's fault and his administration before. For years, the North Korea or Kim Jong Un has been threatening American and its citizens, and he's done nothing but talk, talk. Yeah, he's a good talker, but that's all he ever did. You're forgetting that that man created ISIS. He was saying it in front of us, our, our eyes and our ears for years, saying arming rebel our ISIL forces, and that eventually led to ISIS. And he always put these sanctions, so-called sanctions. So, are you talking about Kim Jong Un or Barack Obama now? No, but Barack Obama. This is created like ISIS. Stuff. Yeah, he did. Him and him and his Clinton buddies created them by arming the rebels, so-called ISIL forces, as he always said in the media in his speeches. And then with the North Korea, he's always sanctioned, it's put all these sanctions on about how he shouldn't be threatening us, etc. For once, you've got a president who's actually going to back up and defend American people if need must. What's he going to do, do you think? So you think there is going to be a war? Of course there will be, eventually. Of course there will be. If they keep playing up like they do, like a sport little brat, then they're going to get dealt with, aren't they? So who, who are you talking about, America or, or, or North Korea? North Korea. Right, and, and you've got to feel for the people more than anything. What they should well, do so is let's just bomb them, take then. out the leader. No, no, just take out the leader. Right, just take him out. Because it, all you all you're doing is slandering Trump. But what's he doing? He's just defending American people when they're being threatened again and again and again. I, you, but uh, I bet if I bet if North Korea <laughs> bombed um, North Korea bombed an American place, you'd be like, oh, oh this is bad. How dare he? But then as soon as Trump done something, you'll go. Oh, how dare he do that? Look at him, he's a criminal, he's a murderer. Hang on, you just, that, that would be the same reaction. You just said how dare he twice. I mean, I've, surely I've got to approve of one and disapprove of the other for you to have a point. Well, no, but listen, I'm not denying Trump's a bit of a numpty. You, you can't deny that. Look at him, just look at him. Mate, let's start Let's start again. And, and when, you, when you picked up the phone, I thought, I'm just going to give James a ring and tell him what I think. It, it, what was the sort of crystallised thought in your brain when you did that? Well, all this started from Obama. Right, which is what Sean Hannity has been saying on Fox News. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So, I mean, it works, doesn't it? Otherwise, I wouldn't pay him so much. Sang's in Collindale. Sang, what would you like to say? Hi, James. Hello, um, always been a great fan. Um, first on caller. You're very welcome. Um, I'm originally from South Korea. Oh, gosh. Um, I've lived in um, 
Ireland and the UK for the past, I don't know, 20 years. I can detect a hint of the Irish accent in the in the background there, Sag. So, so, so <laughs> clearly you're telling the truth. Carry on. <laughs> yeah, great. Uh, it, it's quite hard to tell. Um, but yeah, um, I think it's quite crazy how people are talking about the fact that it, it, America should strike North Korea yes. without realizing um, the details of what the Korean War was. Um, it was a theater field for, um, I don't know, capitalists and the communists during the Cold War. Mm. And um, it has ever since. And um, There's a, a proxy China, war between uh, the West and the East, well, between Russia and America. No, it's actually from um, uh, China to US. Actually, Russia didn't really want North Korea to actually initiate the war. I didn't know that. Um, so it's Chinese but, uh, communism versus American capitalism. Yeah. Okay. It, it, ha it has become. Uh, it was a. It was a theater for Russians to test, and uh, Chinese helped, but they were trying to not to make it a field into their own field. Okay. Um, the the problem is right now. Um, South Korean military and the U.S. military have plans to strike first at what is called the precision strikes. Yes against Pyongyang and the military bases in, that has missiles. But the problem is the North Koreans have a very old military system with thousands of cannons and uh, small range tiny missiles that actually targets massive cities in South Korea. Uh, it, there's no precision strike that could actually target those at the same time of targeting the capital. So if war to war break, the first day would see millions of casualties. Because North Korea would would just sort of unleash quite old fashioned fury upon South Korea. Yeah, and there's no missile defense or anything to do with that. And so it's a, th it, this seems to be a technological divide as much as, a, as an ideological one. So it would be almost as mm -hmm. if the war was being fought and both sides had completely different weapons. Yeah. And um, the problem is because North Korea now has a nuclear weapon, the byproduct of nuclear weapon is that it could actually cause an EMP strike. And if it were to initiate a war first, it will detonate a nuclear bomb either in, in Japan or in space or uh, an air to create an EMP attack to destroy all the modern military technology. The EMP being? Electri electronic magnetic pulse to destroy all the circuits of modern tanks, modern missiles. Uh, I have to tell you something, saying Ca Caroline F wrote, before, before she put you through to the studio, Caroline wrote on the screen that you thought that everything was being a little bit too sensationalized. And now you're describing kind of interplanetary warfare. Well, that's what, that's what I'm saying, because the complication <laughs> is uh, they're so severe that um, there's no way it's, it's going to happen. Yeah, but, but you're, you're doing the thing that I wish I could still do, which <laughs> is presuming that sense will at some point feature in this process. Now, I, I presume, yeah. and correct me if I'm wrong, because the last thing I want to do is put words into your mouth, I presume that you don't expect Kim Jong-un to be constrained in any way by sense. Well, I'm more worried about Trump than Kim. Well, that's my point. That's what I was leading. Well, yeah. actually, no, that isn't my point. I was thought we'd, we'd, get, we'd get a free pass on, on Kim Jong-un being um, a little unhinged. But then mm. my argument was going to be, but in order for your confidence that good sense will be imposed because the implications of escalation are so huge, you have to think that Donald Trump is somehow susceptible to, to good sense or wise counsel. And you've kind of shot that fox already. So in terms of as, as someone of, of, of South Korean origin, how, uh, forgive me for the crassness of this question, but how frightened are you, given that you've, you've, you've spent your whole life as a, as a citizen of a country where war has always felt a lot closer than it has in, in this country? Um, how, how do you feel this morning? Um, it just feels every step closer to, you know, being frightened because all my relatives are still in South Korea. Yes. And my family, my mom and dad. Um, it, it, it's just that sensationalization is okay, but... Well, what, what do you mean by that? Do you, do, you, do you mean turning it into a sort of, into a binary debate or, or treating it like a kind... Is that what you mean by sensationalization? You're, you've rung in to tell me this yeah. is much more serious than you realize. 
Yeah. Ah, it, okay. It strikes it strikes a modern society. I mean, South Korea is the 11th biggest economy in the world. China is the first. Japan's the second. And you're talking about a war that would affect every single one of those economies. And that would actually have a trickle-down effect on every other economy in the world. And for us to debate, that that's something that's quite easy to do. It's just scary. Yeah, well, I, I th- thanks, Sang. Cheers, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose you have to sort of try and keep a wry smile on your face, but that, that was a pretty grim analysis um, from, from from a young man who is who is South Korean. I don't think any of us will forget in a hurry the observation that he's more worried about Donald Trump's stability than he is about Kim Jong Un's. I think we might draw a line under that before we all get too scared to continue with the program. I agree.